Hello and welcome to the big picture. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is embarking on a three-nation tour today, including Sri Lanka, Seychelles and Mauritius, all three key to the Indian Ocean strategy of India. Modi will be the first Prime Minister in 28 years to visit Sri Lanka. It may be recalled that Prime Minister Manmohan Singh was also scheduled to visit the island nation in late 2013, but was cancelled. The visit of Modi coming as it does a few weeks after the visit of Sri Lankan President Maithripala Sirisena is being seen as significant in the context of improving the relations between the two countries. However, there are also questions raised about the timing of the visit. Sri Lanka, which has a new government, is expected to have its parliamentary elections in July. Meanwhile, will Modi's visit be able to re-establish the close relations between the two countries after a period of distrust during the period of Mahinda Rajapaksa? How much will this visit help in India being able to draw Sri Lanka away from China, which is seen as having established strong presence in the region? This and many other questions need a discussion. To discuss this, I have with me M.K. Badrakumar, former ambassador, H.K. Dua, veteran journalist and MP in the Rajya Sabha, Alok Bansal, executive director of SAISA and senior fellow at the CLOS, who was also part of the IPK of operations in Sri Lanka as a naval officer in the late 1980s and Siddharth Vardrajan, senior journalist and former editor of The Hindu. Welcome to all of you. Mr. Dua, you think that the visit is well-timed? Very well-timed. It should have been a bit earlier also. But it's never too late. It certainly comes after uh, the initiative we took calling the Prime Minister of various countries on the what swearing, swearing? ceremony. He immediately followed Bhutan, Nepal, Sushma Swaraj was sent to Bangladesh. Then he got concerned with the Japanese and Americans and all that. Sri Lanka, other things were happening. When, when he was being sewn in, I think Chinese by that time had docked their submarine <laughs> in, on the East Coast. Now, that I think really shook them. Not that Raj Paksha was uh, certainly not a convenient kind of a person for them. And many other things are happening between China and Sri Lanka. And Ch Chinese are also were talking of the maritime silk route. Right. Now there's nothing silken about their ambition <laughs> <laughs> in the Indian Ocean. Now, so they were conscious of this, but letting a submarine get parked just a few miles, the stretch of a territory with India, I think that really shook them up that there is a, you cannot neglect Sri Lanka relationship. Then the elections in Sri Lanka have helped. In fact, immediately he sent a congratulations and then uh, was Raj recently went. He should have special wire at that time. Yeah. Then the Prime Minister came and the uh, President came and all that. So it started the elections in Sri Lanka the result, Raj Paksha getting out provided them an opportunity, which they would have loved it even earlier, sometime earlier. With Raj Paksha, it looked like it was uh, kind of the end of the road they were reaching. So there, 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 are, there is an opportunity now to revive the relations. Revive and uh, revive on a very friendly note. Madhuri Kumar, how do you look at it? You see, in a historical sense, uh, the Prime Minister's visit is something very good that is happening because uh, an interlude of 28, 28 years. years is simply not uh, possible to explain it, not possible to comprehend it. You know, this is not how a no, the serious, last time uh, I, I think the last time, if I'm not wrong, was yeah. when Rajiv Gandhi was butted on the head. Yes. You know, we and have, after we that, are, yeah. no Prime Minister wanted to go. We are living in a world where neighbors pick up phones and talk every fortnight in Europe. They meet in the weekends. You know, they spend weekends together. They're chatting up. Networking is the uh, is a very important aspect of international diplomacy in the contemporary world. And I think India's approach is very wrong. You know, because these are leaders. Whether it is not only Sirisena, not only because Mahinda Rajapaksa has been replaced by Sirisena or anything. Even Nawaz Sharif, Sheikh Hasina. I think there has to be much more frequent interaction <laughs> at the leadership level. Networking is very important. Therefore, historically. I think what is taking place is very important. But on the other hand, uh, I think uh, my 
viewpoint is spacing it out after Sirisena's visit to India would have been which preferable. Just, which is just two weeks old. Till July. Because uh, a prime minister's visit cannot be very often repeated like this. You know, it's a high profile thing. And uh, present prime minister is a very forceful personality with a certain reputation and there is a certain high expectation out of this. Now, can we fulfill that? You know, that is the point. Because we also have to see that there is a government in position in Sri Lanka which is, really speaking, a transitional setup. You know, it's, a, it's, it's curious to say that, but it is a transitional setup. Because if you really analyze the presidential uh, election, election results, you would find that uh, Mahinda Rajabakse held his ground. There has not been any substantial erosion in his base, popular base. So in the parliamentary election, it's anybody's guess how he is going to perform, how the political realignments subsequently will be. Because after the parliament election. After the parliament election, because the SLFP and UNM, UNP are traditionally rivals, and even there are very strong personality clashes. And do not forget that Mr. Sirisena, apart from his background as a communist, young communist leader in his youth, when he was uh, young, a leftist leader, he's been consistently for over three decades, he's been an SLFP man. He's a quintessential SLFP man. So now party politics is very entrenched in Sri Lanka's political landscape. And party politics will surface, it's bound to surface. And therefore, uh, with a little more clarity, I think staking prime minister in, in, in the relationship could have been after getting a little more clarity about it. There is no rush about it. China, there is, you see, China is not going to go anywhere. Now, maritime. <laughs> we will we'll discuss, we'll come to the China aspect. But it's, what you have said is interesting. Alok Bansal, Badru Kumar's interesting point that, you know, he, the, the Sri Lankan president was here just two weeks back, and then, you know, you could have waited till July. Would you agree? No, I don't think so. I think uh, the visit is at the right time. It's essential because uh, President Sirisena, we must represent uh, victory, actually represents coming together of disparate forces. And already there are signs within the political establishment that the disparate forces are now pulling at each other. And in, I think you're it, talking in what's happening in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Disparate forces pulling each other. Yeah, UNP, so how I think, is Indian Prime Minister's yeah, visit going to I help think that? Indian Prime Minister's visit at this juncture actually reinforces to some extent because Sri Sena has now emerged as the leader of SLFP. I think a realignment is taking place. And Sri Sena's initial moves have been seen to be distinctively pro-India because he has gone in for a review of all Sri Lankan uh, projects. And more importantly... Chinese projects in Sri Lanka. Uh, sorry, uh, Chinese projects in Sri Lanka. But what is more important is we have to analyze Sri Sena's victory, as Ambassador Bhadra Kumar said. You must see, Sri Sena's victory has come because of full-fledged support of all minorities. Be it ethnic minorities, be it religious minorities, and the urban singular voters by and large, who were actually fed up with autocratic regime of Mahinda Rajapaksha. Basically, India's aspirations in Sri Lanka have always been that the Tamil aspirations must be fulfilled within a unified Sri Lanka. And Mahinda Rajapaksha, after having made all sorts of commitments during the war, had gone back. And India realized that there were hardly any leverages which India had against Mahinda Rajapaksha. And I think at this juncture, India wants to give a direction to Indian Ocean policy, India's policy vis-a-vis -vis Indian Ocean. Sri Lanka is a very, very key ingredient. And I think how Sri Lanka shapes up its position and its policies. And I think at this juncture to strengthen President Siri Sena, I think this visit was a very, very essential okay. requirement. Siddharth, is it, would you agree with Alok Bansal that you know, this visit will strengthen Siri Sena? And what about uh, Badra Kumar's you know, point that Maybe he could have waited till uh, the Prime Minister could have waited till July, t till we get some clarity on what, th what the politics of Sri Lanka is all about. India has to deal with governments that are if in power. If it is disturbing you, uh, Siddharth, uh, if it is disturbing you, I can is, come back. Uh, far more understanding of India's concerns than, uh, than President Rajapakse was. But uh, I don't think delaying a visit uh, will alter the ground reality all that much. Just like I don't think uh, Mr. Modi going to Colombo is going to give a big boost to, uh, uh, to President Sirisena. It is true that there is a lot of enthusiasm. I just returned from, from Jaffna and Colombo, uh, and there is a lot of anticipation and excitement. People are looking forward to Mr. Modi's visit, and uh, they're looking forward to uh, the enhancement of India-Sri Lanka ties. But I think India needs to be mindful that Sri Lanka be given the space it needs 
to take its foreign policy decisions on the basis of its own calculus, its own strategic calculus. You know, India lecturing Sri Lanka to do this or do that with China, it's all very well, but it will, any change in Sri Lankan policy will only be durable if the Sri Lankan authorities themselves realize that uh, 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 the, you know, the, the kind of relationship that Rajapaksa was trying to build with Peijing was not necessarily in Colombo's interest. So I think that uh, a are you saying a that there is of, of, this of realization? Trust, sorry, sorry, equals. Sorry, Siddharth. This is what is needed. Sorry, Siddharth. Is there, are you saying that there is this realization in in Sri Lanka itself about, about the kind of the kind of policies which Rajapaksa had 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 followed well, as far as India, China is concerned? I think there is uh, a clear understanding in the new government that uh, many of the projects that, uh, the economic projects that uh, the Rajapaksa government signed with the Chinese were rushed through. The economics doesn't always make sense. The environmental calculations, particularly with the port city project, the Colombo port city project, uh, you know, that doesn't make sense. Uh, and I think that the new government should be given the space to uh, reevaluate these projects without any Indian you know, overt Indian pressure or Indian breast beating. You know, the Colombo Port City project is not a strategically <coughs> significant project for India. It's essentially a, to my mind, an environmentally damaging uh, uh, vanity project for Colombo that uh, the Rajapaksa signed and you know, a lot of, you know, a, a small number of people will make a lot of money uh, to the detriment of the coastline of, 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 of Colombo and further south. Right. So uh, I think that sometimes we over, in India we overinterpret the strategic side Sri Lanka needs to be given the space, the new government needs to be given the space to take decisions which I'm sure they will take because there are many things that Rajapaksa did that were not rational, that were actually against Sri Lanka's interest. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dua, uh, you know, it's, it's all fine about India saying that, you know, we, will, we, will, we have to rebalance the relations with, with uh, Sri Lanka in the context of its, it having leaned too, a little too much towards China. But, you know, I was reading the interview, that, that very important interview of the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka, which, uh, you know, re just last week, with, uh, uh, you know, there he is very clear, the, the, the Ranil Vikramasinghe seems to be, you know, very clear about what they're t t trying to do. And, and he even talks about the Port City project, which Siddharth was mentioning, that they're, they're looking, they're re-looking at all these things. So, as, as Siddharth suggests, should India just stay, you know, keep back and allow them to take their own decision instead of trying to be seen as imposing ourselves on them? You see, number one, India should not get involved. There will be some involvement, but not too deeply involved with Sri Lanka's internal politics. As Mr. Bhadrukumar said, that Raj Pakshe still has some constituency left, which is very inconvenient for us. And parliamentary elections, they might like to reignite that. Uh, we don't that know what will happen. One, we don't know what will happen. Now, it is Sri Lanka and also the Sri Lanka people in Sri Lanka government, now Ranil Vikram Singh and Sri Sina, have to do the rebalancing themselves politically. Keeping India in mind, they will not fall out with Chinese. Let's not expect too much. So long as the Chinese don't, don't have, don't impinge on Indian security interest in Sri Lanka and around in this part of Indian Ocean, we should be happy with that. No matter this is this project, or other project, or other project, essential Indian core security interest should be kept in mind. And I think Chinese will also get the message that India will not uh, will not like to have it. Madhur Kumar, the China, no, is it yeah. all about China? Is there are two actually there are two mm. things. When when whenever we have discussed Sri Lanka or whenever Sri Lanka is discussed, there are two things which are discussed. One, India looking at Sri Lanka, Indian government having looked at Sri Lanka from the prism of Tamil, Tamil Nadu. One. Second thing, in the recent past, looking at India-Sri Lanka relations through the prism of China. So, you know, these are two things which have, which, have, which have been the constant in the relationship. Do you think anything can change? You see, in all this uh, discussion, what we are overlooking is that uh, Sri Lanka's foreign policy has been robustly independent all along. Right. You know, uh, the China relationship... Though we have... We have, we have though the China India, relationship, India would have liked to think that we have been... The China relationship it. is not something which began with Rajapaksa. You know, if you remember, in the 1962 conflict, they offered to mediate. 
between India and China. Yeah, there are Colombo proposals. So, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, it goes back a long way. India uh, discovered the doctrine of non-alignment, but it, to my mind, the best practitioner has been Sri Lanka, in, 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 in the Asian region, at least, one would say. Now, uh, therefore, it is a fallacy on our part to imagine that China would come and just gobble up Sri Lanka, or that Sri Lanka would sell itself to another country. It will defy any country's domination, and quintessentially the problem with India is Sri Lanka's atavistic fear of Indian domination. We must understand that. And that is quintessentially the, big brother the attitude problem. Which many of the that neighbors is, have. Yeah, that is the quintessential. You know, it's, it's also got its uh, cultural, historical uh, overlappings, right. you know, which complicates it. So it's a very complex relationship. And therefore, uh, for us to go and uh, even, you know, to prescribe something to Sri Lanka, I think it will be counterproductive. I entirely go along with uh, what Dua Saab has said, that uh, we have to have a tremendous clarity as to what we want out of the paradigm. We have certain core interests, vital concerns, and there are red lines there. And that has to be uh, borne in mind. That is what you would like to explain. Uh, not lines. only Sri Lanka. About which are the, what are the red lines? No, for example, for example, certainly a naval base in Sri Lanka, under any kind of garb, you know, with the huge presence we have got in Andamans and so on. It's, I mean, I don't need to explain our concerns there. Now, these are things, you know, which not only Sri Lanka, other neighboring countries also have to be mindful of, you know. I have a feeling that China is mindful of it. Now, this particular so, thing... And, and, and they, are, they, are, they are working within those regions? Yes, because straight away China has proposed that there could be scope for a trilateral cooperation. Now, this is a very tantalizing thought. Yeah. And earlier, a couple of years ago, China had proposed also that the level of the two navies, there could be discussions about maritime cooperation in the Indian Ocean region. Now, you know, there is a lot of forward thinking taking place because, you know, what we are doing now in the international arena is that, you know, with all kinds of uh, interplay going on, countries are exploring the frontiers because this is, this is a new frontier, you know, Indian Ocean, for example, entire Cold War era, <coughs> Indian Ocean was never a theater, significant theater. The nearest it came to South Asia was the uh, Soviet intervention in Afghanistan and the Afghan Jihad. But now books are being written that Indian Ocean is going to be the epicenter. Exactly. So, you know, it's a very different situation and, you know, therefore, let's not uh, uh, get into knee-jerk reactions. Okay. I think all said still... What we need to do is, uh, the kind of things that we have attempted towards Sri Lanka, as you correctly mentioned, through one prism or the other at different times, things have not worked. Now, how do we actually juggle it all around exactly. and see how we can get? For that to happen, there must be clarity about what we want. Is there that clarity? Bansal? See, I must, uh, I think, put things in correct perspective. Sri Lanka's foreign policy vis-a-vis -vis India has actually oscillated from distancing itself from India to cooperation with India. If you remember from the time of Sena Naike Kotlawala. You are talking of Sri Lanka. Yeah, what absolutely. about India's response? India's response, uh, of course, has been, of, uh, I think, uh, our, uh, a reaction to what Sri Lankan policies have been. Because let me quote Kotlawala, who was the second uh, Prime Minister, who said that in Sri Lanka's case, its security threats can emanate only from one direction, that is from the north. It is only SWRD, Bandar Naike and all that the India and Sri Lanka started getting together. And even in 87, we need to understand that J.R. Jaiwardhane first went to all other across the globe trying to get alliance against LTT. And it's only under certain amount of pressure that he actually agreed to collaborate with India. And since then, I think there has been very close cooperation between the two countries. And President Rajapakshe also collaborated with India till the war was going on and even after war he was cognizant of the red lines because he made a very clear statement he says as far as Sri Lanka is concerned we China may be a good friend but India is a relative and in South Asian context relatives are for keeps friends may come and go so that was very clear now the second point point which we, we must understand is that Rajapaksha may have got lot of votes but politically, he has been now marginalized because SLFP leadership has now actually transferred to Sri Sena. 
And with, it, that, with, with the result of that, what is happening is that Ranil Vikramasinghe is actually now trying to garner the votes which had gone to Mahinda Rajapakshe. And he is as a result this taking... Exactly the, this is exactly the point probably yeah. he was making that there is still... He is posturing. As, if you no, see his interview... The government is, yeah, the, the where interview he talked of we'll shoot down the fisherman or something. That is actually trying to assume those hawkish posture to garner the no, votes. he is talking, he was asked, Vikram Singh was asked how long this, this alliance will continue. He says at least two years. So in the two years seems to be the, the, is the longest period that they think that this alliance will continue. So that alliance, to my mind, will not last beyond the parliamentary election in any case because... So uh, the, uh, then Mr. Badrakumar's words that maybe India should have waited to see what the... Uh, uh, see, yes. We have to engage both the parties, there is no doubt. Both Ranil and Siri Sena in the past have actually shown a uh, lot of reverence as far as India is concerned. In fact, uh, when they were both in opposition, uh, uh, when Ranil was in uh, opposition, he has been, I think, uh, trying to reach out to India on a number of occasions. Okay. You yes. see, there are uh, strong undercurrents in Sri Lankan politics, and this is not, nothing new. Now, you know, how we come into the picture, how we are affected is that they have often enough used these undercurrents and the interplay of these undercurrents to ward off Indian uh, pressure, Indian, Indian advice, and so on. Today, what is happening is, for example, uh, they have, uh, with Ranil's uh, interview makes it very clear that they are uh, cracking the Tamil constituency. That is, uh, one is Vigneshwaran being isolated. And they are getting around certain elements of the Tamil National Alliance. My time in Sri Lanka in the early 1980s it used to be that they used to say, they used to tell us that your interest is the plantation Tamil. <laughs> you know? And then they used to have a plantation Tamil, they used to have a Colombo Tamil, and they used to have a Jaffna Tamil at that time. So you see, this goes on all the time. And these posturings, of course, is part of electoral politics, the uh, Sinhala nationalistic posturing. But at the same time, having said that, that also cuts us. Because the point is, that is when they say that, look, beyond a point, we can't go. Like, we also tell this to outsiders. Absolutely. You know? Siddharth, Siddharth, my question is this. That now, now that yeah. all these years, in the, in the last 25 years, virtually or more, 25 years at least, every Indian government, every government which was here in Delhi had, was dependent to some extent on one or the other Tamil parties, the ADMK or the DMK. Now that situation is not there, now Narendra Modi has this own majority. You think the Prime Minister is, 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 has un, is unshackled by the, by, by, by the kind of pressures which normally the Indian Prime Minister used to have from the Tamil parties? And Sri Lankan, Sri Lankan say that, you know, tell the Indian, tells the Indian government, please don't look at Sri Lanka through the prism of Tamils. Is that possible? I think it is possible and it's desirable also, but India wields some influence uh, as far as the uh, Tamils in the north are concerned. Uh, they have looked to India in the past for succor and India is actively involved in the uh, you know, efforts to rebuild, to reconstruct. There's a housing project and various other things, the railway line, India was involved. So I think that uh, you know, India has a role to play. Right now the role that India needs to play is to counsel the Tamil leadership in, uh, in the north that they should avoid uh, taking certain kind of maximalist position. I think the resolution passed by the uh, Northern Prevention Council uh, on uh, uh, you know, speaking about the genocide of the Tamils and saying how neither this government nor any future Sri Lankan government will be capable of delivering justice. I think uh, these kinds of resolutions, this kind of upping of the ante at a time when you have uh, 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 you know, the election of uh, President Sirisena and new hope for a political settlement of the Tamil issue, this is quite unhelpful. And I, th I would expect that uh, Mr. Modi would spend his time in Jaffna in you know, conveying in his own way that uh, now is a unique opportunity for Sri Lanka to, to uh, in, in a sense, transcend the divisions of the past and move ahead uh, in a spirit of uh, reconciliation, justice, of course, inclusiveness. And, and both leaders in the North and the South uh, ought to respect the mandate that they got uh, in the election and, and carry that process forward. So I, you know, I think there is still a role to play uh, as far as uh, uh, you know, Mr. Modi is concerned. But I want to underline that the political situation is really quite fluid uh, in Sri Lanka. I mean, the, the ideal option from uh, the point of view of the current 
you know, uh, uh, both Ranil and uh, Mr. Sirisena as if uh, uh, Ranil's party wins the parliamentary election. So you have an executive prime minister played by Ranil and uh, President Sirisena assumes the role of an elder statesman who had the vision to give up the kind of authority that he might have enjoyed for the greater good of Sri Lanka. Things get complicated if um, the SLFP uh, wins the election or if uh, the Rajapaksa group, uh, we don't know if they're going to set up a, a separate party or will try to capture the SLFP in the event that the SLFP does well. Uh, that's when the story will get complicated. Right. Uh, uh, in an ideal world, uh, the existing arrangement between Ranil and President Sirisena ought to carry on and I think that would place Sri Lanka in a very good position. But I do, I do think that uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi's uh, counsel, both to the leaders of the North and the South, uh, to find a just solution, an inclusive solution, to uh, address the concerns of the people in the North about the footprint of the army, uh, to deal with you know, uh, political prisoners and political reconciliation in general. Uh, I think any counsel or advice that uh, President Mo uh, Prime Minister Modi can offer silently, gently, uh, uh, privately would be would really would really really go down uh, well okay. in Sri Lanka. Okay, Mr. Dua, quickly. I think I tend to agree with uh, Siddharth. We have to advise conciliatory approach to 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 rulers now and conciliatory to, to Tamils also that go in for reconciliation. Whatever the past history may be, bitterness is there, lingering bitterness will be there. But over assertion by India to bring about patch up between between North and South in Sri Lanka and the Tamilians, uh, that would be counterproductive. It will be subtle diplomacy. You have to you have to you have to adopt very very subtle. And yet there should be atmosphere of reconciliation in Sri Lanka. It is possible despite the bitterness at the top. Particularly okay. now, then it used to be under Raj Paksha. There is an opportunity. Just but two things I just wanted to say. The Tamils in the run-up to the presidential election showed very great sagacity because when Sampantan transferred his support of the TNA to president, he did not talk of any Tamil issues. He talked of all national issues to prevent autocracy. Now these issues and these resolutions are, I think, driven at parliamentary elections because he doesn't want that the Tamil vote should get frittered away. So he is actually now trying to seek that vote and consolidate it behind him. I think Tamils have realized that confrontation doesn't pay. And to that extent, I think Sri Lanka needs to move to first-past-the-post system because this proportional representation gives in voice to fringe elements on the far right of the fact, Shingala as well as fact, the Tamils. Vikram Singh has, has a new proposal. In fact, he wants everybody, yes. all the parliamentarians to be ministers. And, you know, he has spoken in his interview of a new form of government in Sri Lanka. But, uh, Madhu Kumar, very quickly, last words. What kind of pressures will the Prime Minister Modi face when he goes and meets these people? The kind of pressure, I was talking of the Tamil, looking through the prism of Tamil. Tamil, uh, Tamil Nadu, Tamils, you think he, he, he has been, he'll be able to overcome that completely? Frankly, it's a very challenging mission that the Prime Minister is undertaking. What uh, Siddharth Vazirajan has said is actually exactly what we have been doing for something like five to six decades. It didn't take us anywhere. You know, so uh, replay of that, I don't see much sense in that because I am not even cautiously optimistic for this reason that uh, we are underestimating the potency of Sinhala nationalism. They shall not have anything beyond a unitary state. And they shall not have anything in terms of a devolution of powers because it's a question of their national identity. I am not justifying it. I am trying to understand it. Right. And they have a perspective. And they will not budge from that. So this huge expectation from the visit to the Prime Minister, we, we, need, to, we need to lower those expectations. This particular aspect of it of uh, trying to counsel people on one side to be patient and Why the other one to be to, larger. To implement 13th Amendment. We've done it. We've done it all along. G. Parthasarathy mission, everything was related to that only, that approach. It didn't take us anywhere. So now what we need to do is, uh, we have to come up with this a much bigger challenge, uh, Girish, here. You mentioned in the beginning about the maritime strategy and all that, yes. Silk Road strategy and all that. The point is, uh, this sort of episodic efforts and embellishing it with, you know, some kind of cutting a ribbon and opening a cultural <laughs> center is not actually neighborhood policy. We need to come up with solid okay. initiatives. I think we have completely, know? sorry, we have completely run out of time. On that note, we need to end. We'll wait and watch what will be the outcome, and we'll come back and discuss that. Thanks to all my guests. Please keep watching. We'll